Welcome to the second lecture on the visualization of graphs. Today we want to talk about drawings of trees and of serious parallel graphs. We will look at three drawing styles for trees, namely the layer drawings as we see here, the HV drawings as we see here, radial layouts as we see here, and then we will introduce serious parallel graphs and also have a look at one drawing algorithm for them. We will start with layered drawings of trees because in the last lecture we already found our very first one. We had a very simple algorithm, we choose the y coordinates as the depth and the x coordinates as one of three traverses pre order in order and post order. In the end I asked you which of these three drawings are your favorite and I'm pretty sure that most of you will choose the one in the middle, the in order. And while this is already a nice drawing, it can still be improved. For example, I think it looks nicer if we move this vertex over here in the middle. But what exactly we want to do and how to achieve that, that we want to have a look at in this lecture. First, there are some applications of these layered drawings. So for example, for decision trees, that's usually what you want to do. You place your decision and then you go to the left or to the right based on what you choose and then you get your whole decision tree where in the end you get some result. This drawing style has a long tradition. It's already been used here in 1821 for a table of general questions. And it's also used here for this family tree of Lord of the Rings, Elves and Half-Elves. And also in the examples I showed you the last time there was this nice one for the Greek gods. This is also a layer drawing because you have all those gods on different layers. But what exactly are the properties of these drawings that we want to have? What exactly are the drawing conventions? And what exactly are the aesthetics we want to optimize? So, if we look at this, what do you think? What are the drawing conventions? What should we list? What properties should this drawing achieve? I will list four for you. First, we want the vertices to lie on layers and have integer coordinates, like we can see here. Every vertex has an integer, x and y coordinate, and we have those layers, which is just the depth of the vertices. Second, we want the parent to be centered above the children. Here we can see it's exactly in the middle between these, in the middle between these. Here it is not, but the way we changed it earlier, like this, this looks much better than before. We want the edges to be straight line segments. We don't want them to have any bends or curves, just straight line segments. And what we also want is something that we probably didn't come up with, that is isomorphic subtrees have identical drawings. What does that mean? So let's say a draw tree like this is drawn that way with our algorithm. Now if we have any tree where this appears as a subtree, it shall always be drawn the same way. Isomorphic for graphs basically means it's the same graph. So you have a projection from every vertex of one graph to the other vertex such that both have the same incidences. And when you have the same graph twice in the same drawing, it shall be drawn the same way. So this is what this means. And that's also something that we would like to have and that you can see here. We have this subtree three times and always it's drawn the same. It's something similar. We have this subtree here and here. This is almost the same. And basically this is just mirrored. And it would be great if we have these isomorphisms that it's also drawn mirrored. And that's something that we can achieve here. What are the drawing aesthetics? So what do we want to minimize or maximize? Well, what we want to minimize is for one, the area, we don't want this to blow up, but we want it to be quite compact and we want to have nice symmetries. So we'll have a look at our first algorithm. The input for us for now is again just a binary tree and later we will generalize it to any tree. And the output shall be a layered drawing with these drawing conventions. And the way we want to draw this is we want to use divide and conquer. For divide and conquer algorithms, we always have a base case. We have a divide step and we have a conquer step. The base case is very simple. For our tree, it is just a single vertex. Basically, it's just a leaf. And to draw it, well, we just place it somewhere and we're done. 
in the divide step, we want our tree to be decomposed into smaller subproblems that we then independently solve and then put them together in the conquer step. How would you divide a tree in the divide step? Well, if you look at the tree here, we have a binary tree, so we clearly have a left child and a right child, or maybe only one of them. And we can get look at these subtrees that we get from the left and right child. And we recursively apply the algorithm to these two subtrees. So for the conquer step, we can assume that they are already drawn. And now we want to put those two trees together with the drawing of the root, which is just a single vertex, but is somewhere in the middle. To do this, we want to put them as close together as possible, because our drawing is static, we want to minimize is the area. How close can we put them? That's the big question. So we have to agree to some minimum distance that we want to have between the trees. Here we will say this should be a two, because if we look at the root and just two children, if we draw them like this, they have a distance of two. And now if this here comes closer, so let's just try to move it over here. This looks a bit too close to me. This doesn't look nice. Why are these two closer than those two siblings? So two is a good thing. And then where do we place the root? We had our drawing convention that says that a parent has to lie in the middle between the children. So we have to place it here. The thing is, if we want to place it exactly in the middle, then we cannot always have this distance of 2. It might be that the distance between this vertex and this vertex is odd, and then we would place it between two integer coordinates. So it can sometimes happen that they are 3 apart. But that's okay for us, we cannot get around this. So now the question we have to ask is how exactly do we find this distance between the two trees? I mean, in this example it's very simple, but these could be huge. And then we have to figure out where exactly do we place the roots of them, so that the minimum distance here is 2 or 3. And how to do that, we want to figure out in the next part.